Hey guys, it's Rosie, welcome back. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you a whole bunch of tips on how to win the wizarding world of Harry Potter. I like to think that I am a Universal Studios expert, but I'm actually just a wizarding world expert because I spend like a good 90% of my time that I'm at Universal in the wizarding world. I mean, why not? It's such a great place. So I'm gonna share with you a bunch of tips. I have a bunch of different categories to share my tips from and this is gonna be quite a video, so let's get started. First, I have general tips. These are tips that I think everyone should adopt. So first, everyone needs to have the app. It shows you wait times, you can mobile order food, you can use the map, you can show what rides are down, just everything is on the Universal Experience app. And honestly, I keep it on my phone all the time and I just look at the wait times any day. It just gives me a little boost of serotonin to see what the wait times are and just to pretend I'm there. So a large percentage of people in the wizarding world especially wear merch and you don't have to wear universal merch. You can buy Harry Potter stuff anywhere. I found it a lot of times at Goodwill but also Amazon is a great place to get it. It's way way cheaper to buy your merch online before you go than to buy at Universal. Universal stuff can be pretty expensive so I recommend buying your merch ahead of time so you can wear it at the parks or to make it yourself like I've done here. I made these robes. I bought this tie on Amazon. Amazon, I believe. This pin is actually from Universal and I made this headband myself too. I'm gonna link my robes down below so you guys can check them out. Accessories like ties and headbands and whatever are always cheaper on Amazon so I would look there first before you plan on buying one actually in the parks. You can dress up in robes. Robes are awesome. It's great to see people dressed up. I always wear my robes to the parks. I think it's just so much fun but you can just wear a t-shirt. It doesn't really matter. You can dress up as your favorite character in your house colors. Just whatever you want to do. Another tip is that if you buy a wand at Universal like this one for the interactive wand experiences sometimes they'll stop working after a couple years. I had this one for three years I believe and it just wouldn't really work super well on the experiences anymore so you can actually bring it back to the wand shops and they will fix it for you. I'm pretty sure they just give you a new wand because this one has a different copyright on it than my original one did but when you're paying that much for a wand it's really great to have that guarantee that it'll always be able to work for the interactive areas. So the next area of tips is hotel. So I always recommend staying in Universal Hotels because it gives you early park admission. I always walk from the hotel to the parks. It's usually faster than taking the boat because you have to wait for the boat a lot of times. I always recommend picking a hotel that you can walk to the parks from because that's just much faster. You can come back during the middle of the day like I'll talk about in a bit. So the closest hotels are Hard Rock, Royal Pacific, Portofino Bay, and Sapphire Falls, but you can also walk from Aventura in Cabana Bay Beach. The other hotels have buses as well but that's just a lot more overhead than just being able to walk or take the boat to your hotel. If you are planning on getting tickets at the hotel or getting an annual pass at the hotel, ticket desks aren't really open in the evening. I've had issues with them being closed so you have to leave time to get your annual passes or your tickets in the morning before you go to the parks. If the ticket booth isn't open when you arrive at the hotel, you can also get your tickets at the booths outside of the parks but sometimes those have a longer line so I prefer to just be ready by the time I'm leaving the hotel just to get that there. If you're staying at a resort hotel, don't bring more stuff than you can secure on yourself into the parks so that you don't have to use lockers because it can be time consuming, it can be crowded, sometimes you have to wait in lines to get lockers, sometimes the lockers fill up, it can just be a whole big deal. Lockers are free so it's not the end of the world. The small lockers are I wouldn't ever bring any more stuff than you can fit in a small locker. Personally, especially when you're staying in a close hotel, I never bring more stuff than I can fit in my pockets or in a little like crossbody purse or a fanny pack just because I can put it under my robes and I can bring it on most any ride. As long as all of your stuff is secured, you don't have to put it in lockers if it's small enough and they don't stop you going into the queue. I've never had to put anything in lockers for Hagrid's. I always recommend going back to your hotel for an afternoon rest. That's when the wait times are the longest and it can be pretty hot or rainy, muggy in Florida. So it's great to get rested and refreshed. Well, you know, it might not be so much fun to wait in line and just stand outside. So you can come back to the parks in the evening after you're rested. You can get food from your room or back at the hotel or in City Walk. 
I also always recommend getting to the parks around 30 minutes before early park admission opens. I much prefer waiting 30 minutes outside the gates and being able to run on a bunch of rides than waiting in ride lines. Often the gates to the parks, especially Islands of Adventure, I haven't really waited super early to get into Universal. The gates open normally around 15 minutes early, so even if early park admission is at 8 a.m. and you get there at 7.20, 7.30. The park may open around 7.50 and then you can get in and get in line for rides like Hagrid's or Velocicoaster that you might be waiting a lot longer later in the day. So the next section is park pass. So I always recommend getting an annual pass if you're going any more than two days to the park an entire year or if you are trying to stay at a resort hotel. I have the seasonal pass which is perfectly fine for me. I live in New Hampshire so I don't often get to go to Universal. I go a couple trips a year so I don't need to be available for every one of the blockout dates. So blockout dates are typically April vacation, July almost the entire month, although they changed that this year, and December around Christmas time, but it can also be really busy just the entire summer and around holidays, so I wouldn't recommend going then just because of longer wait times, but if you aren't planning on going on any of those blockout dates, I would get the seasonal pass because it's much cheaper. But I can do a video explaining each of the different types of annual passes if you guys would like that. If you don't get a annual pass, I would always recommend getting a park to park pass because I don't think that there's enough to do in each of the parks that you would want to stay in one the entire day alone. And I think going on the Hogwarts Express both ways is a great experience. I think that's very important to your universal Wizarding World experience, so always, always, always get a park to park pass. Usually it's not cost effective to buy express passes alone. They can be around $100 or more per day for both the unlimited and the one time per ride express passes, but if you stay at a premier hotel, so that's Hard Rock, Portofino Bay, and Royal Pacific, you can get your unlimited express passes included with your room, which is really, really great because you can get from the time that you check in to when the park closes on your last day you get unlimited express passes through that time as long as you have your room key, which I think is an awesome deal, especially because you can have, I believe, up to five people in just a regular hotel room. So like I showed you before, I would say one of the most important things to buy before your trip is a lanyard because lanyards in the parks can be expensive and I've seen the Harry Potter ones sold out usually, Slytherin and Gryffindor are sold out. So I got this one on Amazon and it was way cheaper. It's also elastic. The ones at the parks are ribbon, but you can also buy these Wizarding World of Harry Potter sleeves for your annual pass, and then on the other side you can put your room key. But it's branded and they're only $1, so make sure that you go to buy one in the Wizarding World because they are not Wizarding World branded outside of there. Having a lanyard and this little sleeve makes park hopping and using express passes infinitely easier, so I really recommend it. So on to express passes. I just have a few tips about this, but like I said, Premier Resorts using the annual pass price, which can be found on the Universal website. If you have an annual pass, you should never book a hotel without the annual pass discount because it can be a lot of money off, so always check that before you book. Staying at Premier Resorts gets you early entry, just like staying at any Universal Resort, but it also gives you unlimited express passes like I mentioned before, which is a great deal. The express line is usually about half of the regular wait time, so if you want to estimate how long you'll be waiting in the express line. It'll be about half of what the posted wait time is. So now I have about a million tips about riding Hagrid's, which is my favorite ride and it's most of the Wizarding World attendees' favorite ride, if I'm going to generalize, because this ride is fantastic. They did such a great job on it. The only issue with it is that it goes down very often. So I'm going to tell you guys a few tips in here that help you deal with when it goes down and how you can get a really short line after it goes down. After you've waited outside the park for about 30 minutes before early park admission opens, do not walk, run to Hagrid's and get in line. Even if the ride isn't open yet, get in line because you're likely going to be waiting way less than you would later during the day. Also, I've never gotten in trouble for running at Universal like I have at Disney, so you can run. I don't think the workers care. If Hagrid's is closed when the park opens, consider waiting in line anyway because it'll often open pretty quickly. Sometimes they just have issues getting stuff started up when they're testing, so there are a lot of animatronics and just moving parts in general on that ride, so it, it, it can be pretty faulty. Pick your spots. Hagrid's, I think, is the most important ride that you ride the entire time you're at Universal. So if you're there, I would consider waiting in line. If 
it's below 50 degrees in the morning, which doesn't happen often in Florida, but if it is, the ride will probably not be open until it warms up. I was there one day in January that I think it was around 45 when we went to the park, which was really cold for Florida, but we had to wait until it warmed up a bit, and then of course we did get on Hagrid's later, but you just have to keep that in mind. If it's gonna be really cold, then maybe wait a little later to try to get in line for it. Another important tip that you could get burned by is you can't wear robes and ride on the motorcycle at Hagrid's. You have to ride in the sidecar if you're wearing robes, so you have to plan ahead because you don't want everyone in your party to end up riding in the sidecar. It would just make a big issue to have to shuffle around everyone and shuffle around robes. So also make sure your wand is safe. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to have wands with you on Hagrid's, but my robes have a wand pocket. I usually just put the wand in there and it ends up being fine. I don't exactly remember what the rules are, but just make sure your wand is safe. Make sure everything is secured. So you can double up on robes. My mom and I often will have one pair of robes each and then either I'll put both on or she'll put both on and then the other person will ride on the motorcycle. The motorcycle, it's just a fact. It's more fun to ride on the motorcycle than in the sidecar. It's just a better experience. So switch off if one of you doesn't get to ride on the motorcycle. So the ride restraint on Hagrid's is a lap bar. Try to keep your wand out of harm's way also. You can hang out right outside of Hagrid's when it's closed and kind of like listen to what workers are saying. Usually they'll have a line of workers just waiting for news about the ride opening. So if you listen to them, usually you'll catch clues and you can know when the ride is about to open so you can get to the front. I think a couple times we've done this, we've been on the first train. We've even been the very first people to get on Hagrid's for the day. So that was awesome. I think it was one of our birthdays too. It was great. Always, always, always listen to what the workers are saying, especially when it's about a ride being down because you can zoom onto rides without any wait times. And if you're early enough, this has happened, but not often for us, you can get on Hagrid's, walk right onto it. I think this was the time that we were in the first car of the first train. You can sometimes get out and loop it with like a 20 to 30 minute wait before people are able to get into the park still. That's always an option if you are able to get in early enough, but sometimes the wait time does rock it up. So just keep an eye out. If you're planning on waiting in line for Hagrid's, the line can be pretty long, but there's also a pretty long section of the queue that is a dark hallway with low ceilings and no windows, but the ride is worth it. So if that bothers you, just keep it in mind. It's way better if you're just walking through it straight in the morning. You might have to wait a little bit in that area if you're coming straight on, because sometimes they open the queue a little bit before they're starting to put people on the ride, but first thing in the morning, you have to wait a lot less in that area. I recommend not bringing much or any stuff on you so that you can jump in line by not going through the lockers. If you have like a small fanny pack or crossbody bag, like I said, you can put it under your robes and just walk right through. You don't have to go through the lockers and you can usually pass a good amount of people by not doing that. If you're waiting outside, then they divert you to the lockers and you can just say, no, I don't have any stuff. And then you get to zoom on through the queue. All right, next we're talking about food. I don't often eat inside of the parks other than you know, snacks. We haven't really ever had much of a meal there. If you aren't going to eat a special wizarding food, consider leaving the wizarding world for much, much, much shorter food lines. And it's normally pretty much the same food too. So you can get back on rides much sooner and you can usually find a place to sit outside of the wizarding world, especially like going outside of Diagon Alley. It's really easy to eat in like the San Francisco area. This is like the best thing to eat at Universal. Get one butterbeer ice cream and one frozen butterbeer. Share it with a friend, but take like a spoonful of ice cream, dip it in the frozen butterbeer. It is so good. Not a lot of people try this, but my mom and I do it every time. It's like, you have to try it. For the shortest lines, don't get ice cream in the middle of the afternoon because that's when everybody is getting it and you'll have to wait a long time for it normally unless it's like cold out. Just keep that in mind. We usually get our ice cream pretty early in the morning. I'll let you guys know what our itinerary is in a bit, but I just recommend not getting ice cream in the hottest part of the day. Hogsmeade is what we're talking about next. Every single morning, whether it's early park admission or no early park admission, just regular, wait outside for Islands of Adventure so you can go on Hagrid's because I hate waiting in lines, especially 100 minutes or whatever that you normally have to wait for Hagrid's. If you can 
get right to Islands of Adventure and go in there first thing. Early park admission is usually only for Forbidden Journey, the Hippogriff ride, Hagrid's, and Velocicoaster. So if those aren't rides that you want to ride, the only thing you can kind of do is just hang out around anywhere because there are no other rides open. So I would just keep that in mind when you're deciding when to go in. Even if you don't want to ride those rides, it's a great time to take pictures in Hogsmeade or Diagon Alley because there aren't that many people in at that time and usually they go straight to the rides. If you want to do the wand experience at Ollivander's in Hogsmeade or Diagon Alley, I would get in line pretty early in the morning or book a time if that's still available because the lines are uncovered and it can get pretty hot out there and they can also be pretty long lines. Also, Filch's Emporium, which is the exit to the Forbidden Journey ride under Hogwarts, is a great place to hide from the rain or heat. Not that many people go in there except when they are exiting the Forbidden Journey, but there are some out of the way places usually on the far left and far right of the store that there isn't that much merchandise, so you wouldn't be in the way if you're just standing there. I also recommend getting a spot early at one of the benches below Hogwarts for the first light show if it is going. You can then go on rides during the later showings when other people are watching, but getting a seat just makes you comfortable when you're waiting and also ensures that you won't be moved because they will put up barriers so that there aren't people standing everywhere. So if you have a seat, then you don't have to worry about it. So next in Diagon Alley, I really love the absolute top of the stairs behind the motorbike by Gringotts in Diagon Alley. I think it's a great place to hide when it's downpouring. Everyone scatters when it starts raining. There's a little overhang so you can enjoy Diagon Alley alone. There's a great view from up there and normally people just don't think about that area. I've eaten many a butterbeer ice cream hiding from the rain up there. I think it's a great spot. So outside of Diagon Alley, I guess it's technically in London, there is a phone booth and you can dial Magic which is 962442 in the phone booth and it calls the Ministry of Magic which is a pretty cool feature. Also take the single rider line in Gringotts if you can because it cuts the wait times really really short and I don't think it really impedes on your experience if you aren't with your group. So now I'm going to move on to a sample itinerary. This is basically the itinerary that I follow every time I go to Universal as long as I'm staying at a Universal hotel. So the first thing is to get in line outside Islands of Adventure around 30 to 45 minutes before the park opens for early park admission. And if it doesn't have early park admission, just line up outside 30 to 45 minutes before the park opens. The park usually opens 10 to 15 minutes early, like I said, so run to get on Hagrid's. Get in the queue, which is normally by Poseidon's Fury, because the line can get pretty long, especially first thing in the morning. Everyone tries to go there. If you run, you can get towards the beginning. So you ride Hagrid's first thing, and then if the wait time is short enough, especially Especially during more of an off time like January February you might be able to hop on it again if you're lucky if not you can go to the Forbidden Journey or the Hippogriff ride those aren't the best rides so I don't ever wait any longer than like 10 to 20 minutes. You can go on those if the wait times are still short enough, or if you have your express passes, just zoom right through the lines. Then I usually ride the train over to Diagon Alley and ride Gringotts a few times before the wait times get long. By a few times, I mean like a good three to four times. I love that ride and I love that the express passes work on it. I love being able to just zoom through because Gringotts is my second favorite ride. So then I always get a frozen butterbeer and butterbeer ice cream and mix them. That is the best combination. I highly, highly recommend it. Eat it on the Diagon Alley steps. Then you can go around and look at any of the shops or other rides that you want to get on early. If you like Gringotts, you can try the Mummy Ride. It's not open right now, but it should be opening very, very soon. That is out on the sort of like city area. I believe it's in New York. The ride is a little more intense. It's more of a roller coaster, but it usually has a really, really short wait time. So it's a great ride for how long you have to wait for it. I usually stay in the parks until midday and I spend most of the morning in Diagon Alley exploring the shops and whatever. I'll sometimes venture out and ride other short wait times like Men in Black, Transformers, or Minions, or you can use your express passes to go on whatever rides you want if you have those. 
in the afternoon, I usually head back to the hotel for a refresh to get lunch, have a rest, just lay down because it can be pretty exhausting being up on your feet for hours and hours and having got up pretty early to get in the parks. An afternoon rest is great when the wait times are long and it's pretty hot out too. After that, I usually go back to either park. You can go into Universal and hang out there for a bit, then ride the train over to Islands of Adventure when you're done. You have to see the train ride in the other direction too, so make sure you get to see both because they're different and it's a really fun experience to go on the train ride especially because you get to go through King's Cross going the other way. The train wait times are often pretty long after the morning so it might be best to ride the train both ways right in the morning before the wait times are long unless you have express passes. Back at Islands of Adventure you can check out the shops and the wand experiences and maybe ride like the Hippogriff again or the Forbidden Journey if the lines aren't too long or of course use your express passes. Around that time of day, I love just sitting there and watching people, watching Hogsmeade. It's just such a beautiful place. Some other fun rides for Harry Potter fans are the Seuss Trolley, which is fun for anyone really, because you get to see a great view of the park. And of course the Seuss Trolley is a very, very mellow ride, great for anyone, and the wait times are usually pretty short for it. The Velocicoaster is similar to Hagrid's. The ride system was made by the same company, so the ride system is very similar, but it is a lot more intense than Hagrid's, so you just have to consider that if you want to go on it. I know that the theming is also very similar to Hagrid's. I also love Dr. Doom's Fearful, but that is really not for everyone. I do just love how short the wait time is. It is consistently like 5 to 20 minute wait time and you can just loop it. It's great. Finally, you can get dinner in the parks or at City Walk, then claim a spot. Hopefully on a bench below Hogwarts for the first light show. Then once that's over, the wait times can get shorter because people are waiting for the following lights shows. So you can hop in line and ride some more rides or head back to the room and rest up for the next day, which is usually what I do. I love going out to City Walk and getting nachos at Antojitos. That place is so delicious and then usually we'll like eat it down on the steps at City Walk. You can see the sunset behind the roller coasters. It's just a really pretty spot. Or you can bring that back to your room and just chill out there and then start over and do it all again the next day. So I hope my tips were helpful for you guys. I put every single thing that I could think of, everything that we are mindful of when we are going to Universal. Like I said, I spend just about all of my time at Universal in the Wizarding World because it's so awesome. I hope this is all helpful to you guys. Let me know if there's anything else that you want to know about Universal or about the Wizarding World. And yeah, let me know if you want an annual pass video or just what park vlogs you want to see, make sure to follow me on all social media at Rosie Revolts. Check out my Etsy shop also at Rosie Revolts where you can see these robes and my book at getoutdoorsbook.com and I will see you guys later. Bye!